people who are loyal friends could be. I mean, uh, when you fund a project, which is sitting at somebody else's premise, I mean, the root of uh, One thing is that what kind of structure you follow. Is it great or is it EPA, whatever you say, but your control is the whole asset is somebody else's place. So, how do you enforce? And how do you structure the financing so that the risk of non payment, risk of non cooperation is completely mitigated? Thanks, sir. So, uh, there are two, I think you just uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, there are two very important aspects uh, when it comes to rooftop uh, solar projects. And the differentiation with any other uh, solar project which you know is not rooftop uh, is that for a normal solar project, it is typically put on one contiguous piece of land where the developer has already executed leasehold uh, agreements or freehold or uh, savings, etc. So the um, the rights to inspect or visit the site is very much easy for a solar power developer uh, as opposed to the unique challenge that a rooftop solar power uh, developer faces, right? Because uh, at the end of the day, the uh, access can be restricted from because you know your rooftop solar plants could be at various places, so it is very difficult to sort of have uh, access to each of these uh, uh, premises. The idea behind, you know, the way we can sort of make, uh, have a robust arrangement is to ensure that we have specific agreements <coughs> with the owner of the premises itself and not just the off-taker because there could be a scenario where the off-taker and the owner are different, right? So, these, uh, uh, these agreements should also have very clear-cut clauses as to how your inspection rights are, have to be permitted, your maintenance rights have to be permitted. Uh, upon, say, termination of the of taker arrangement, how the developer has the right to enter the premises and take, uh, uh, take over the asset. That's number one. And number two, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, CNI space for solar uh, projects, um, if I'm going to a panel, it's very similar to what we see in uh, rooftop uh, solar plants as well. The, again, the peculiarity of this rooftop is uh, that unlike in same aspects for uh, you know, solar projects of a higher capacity which are not rooftop, you, the developers have the opportunity to sort of pick a mixed bag of procurements or of takers. Right? Even if they were private, you have the opportunity to pick and choose that let them be triple rated uh, entities, let them be double rated entities, and let my credit worthiness risk get sort of hedged because you have uh, certain of takers which are highly rated. But with rooftop, you have a very, very uh, varied and a diverse sort of uh, procurer uh, bank. You could have large establishments which are rated companies, and you could have small establishments. Uh, working on a residential or commercial spaces. So it becomes imperative that the optimal arrangements that uh, the developers execute are done in such a way that the termination units are very, very clearly detailed out, number one. Number two, the dispute resolution, of course, uh, towards arbitration or mediation is a preferable approach because it's more uh, cost effective and time friendly. And thirdly, more importantly, while you have termination clauses which are robust and are detailed out and not just, you know, uh, not just uh, very brief, it is important to sort of have uh, termination uh, payment clauses also incorporated in order to ensure and discourage defaults and payment by the operators, number one, and number two, in order to ensure that premature termination is not being done. Could we just, I'm sorry, just one minute of this. Yeah, we, we are I mean, on these assets, we have done about 500 crore. At the end of the day, do you respect the piece of paper, which is the legal document, and the reality when there is a problem? I have run a treasury business with some 500 crore PNL. The setting up was the table is the best solution. That's the most inexpensive and efficient solution, right? Issue is when you do with a triple B plus, plus customer, and officially it could be triple B, unofficially it could be, I mean, you don't agree with it, I mean, may or may not be a judge, right? So, enforcement become a big challenge. Uh, well, that is very true. And like you said, uh, contracts would, you know, at the end of the day, just give you a know, backbone of uh, the discussion. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to table negotiations. <laughs> but uh, at the end, but you know, if you do go ahead with enforcement, etc., it is only those clauses that you sort of negotiate might just sort of, you know, help you. And some easy to be like, that 
Okay, we will go to other three friends we have not spoken yet. I mean, I go to the previous question. I mean, there's a fine balance between as a DPC or a developer at what price to close the transaction. But your friends will really feel you, right? So you have to close a transaction at say 50 rupees per word plus GST plus time we train. And somebody is ready to operate at 40 rupees. Okay, how do you bring that balance? Uh, we'll start with you and then produce that. Yeah, here you can start. <laughs> sure. Uh, that is a smart for experience than me, so I guess. Not really, I don't think so. But, so, well, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the commercial uh, negotiation uh, as such, uh, you know, I think uh, the rationality of the end user into making a choice of what is good for them technically as well as commercially uh, does play a key role uh, in this uh, in this whole transaction that we should be doing. Over a period of time, we have realized by finding such rational customers, you know, uh, that uh, that becomes that funnel becomes narrower and narrower uh, because you because at a certain point in time you go much beyond the network and uh, aim for inorganic growth. So uh, while the organic growth is still happening and you're reaching out to those more and more rational customers, you are able to put across your point of finding that right balance between uh, technical superiority of a product, the sustainability of the project and the commercial viability of the, pro of the project. So uh, that communication uh, is uh, well done. Uh, and uh, post that, I think it's uh, the ABC business has a lot, uh, uh, on the inorganic side, it's, it's a lot about numbers, how many uh, people do reach out, how many get your point and how many end up uh, signing the contract. But uh, I don't see an end to this because uh, you know solar is always flashing as a new avenue and there is uh, uh, lesser baggage to entries. So every year you see entrepreneurs uh, coming into the market and going out uh, just to just for uh, somebody to sustain uh, the business. Uh, it, it really takes uh, certain some guts actually. Yeah. What do you yeah, of course, uh, I would like to add here, uh, sometimes what happens, uh, awareness to the customer, actually that is the important point, because uh, lots of players are in the market, uh, who do EPC, who offer the different different rates, definitely so we talk about 40 to 50. This is the range to offer to the customer. But customer always, uh, you know, is more, okay, someone is saying 42, someone is saying 52, someone is saying 50. Why this is difference? And sometimes, person who is sitting in front of the negotiation, that is person actually comes from the financial or the procurement dialogue. That person is not from the technical or other background, they actually understand the technicality of the solar technology mostly. So because of that, uh, when the finalization comes, the procurement team and the financial team mostly prefer the low cost uh, uh, option. So they go with the low cost model. But before that, if you educate the, your customer, when you talk, start a discussion with the customers, okay, these are their offers, these are their uh, uh, products, these are the qualities. Uh, if you aware that customer, including the policies, because sometimes customers are also in uh, uh, confusion about the policies. So what is the net metering, what is the gross metering, what is the net billing, what is the open access. So someone try to close order at 40 rupees and uh, he is going to the rooftop, net metering. And after three months, customer realized, okay, now I have a possibility to go for the open access. Then he immediately realized, oh, actually I have done the open networking, then I don't have a possibility to go for the open access. So that kind of awareness, if you do with the customers, then the customer will get realized itself, okay, I have enough knowledge, then I can go ahead for the proper cost. Uh, I do agree. Um, about what the gentleman has already said, but uh, I do feel that if a customer is ready to pay you 1 crore rupee, he can definitely give you 1 crore 10 lakh rupees if you have saturated with them. So there are technologies which are very expensive, but we are fortunate enough to crack those technologies and we are uh, fortunate enough to uh, pitch those technologies. Uh, likewise, you have uh, micro internet technology, optimization internet technology for post hoc uh, segments. So people do claim uh, to provide solar system at 35,000 rupees and uh, we are able to sell the same solution at 42,000 rupees per kilowatt. <laughs> so the kilowatt uh, thing never works for us. We try to educate our client uh, how the solar system works and what's the best technology for their rooftop or for their commodity solution and accordingly uh, we can give them the Next question from a developer point of view. So when, when we are uh, assessing any project, so there are multiple developers in the competition and we have our negotiation is with regards to 
regards to time. So, what our approach is that we are ready to optimize in the design part and to SCM in the costing part, whatever it is possible. But at the we have budget safety. So, whether we don't claim to be L1, but whatever our standards are, we follow for each project and we have created some kind of SOP. Huh? The process is very mature and if it falls under our requirements, then only we go ahead with that. So we in our, I mean, I hope we run in our study for ourselves, guys. Right? I mean, if you talk to the, you talk to the right guy. Right? If you talk to a commercial guy who is saying that at the least L1 price, I typically say put a glass panel and put a polythene poly sticker of like uh, same similar to it because it's not work for some time, right? So that's one. That you talk to the right guy and explain that technology matters. And what I'm typically doing in sales call, I have seen that some will chat to put the transaction today and this is the final. First, we will realize that's a quarter final. Somebody will say that it is 48. Tomorrow, somebody will say, I am the guy of the final. Finalize it, give you 46. I realize that's semi final. And then go to somebody, the promoter, they will say, This is the final today. And you don't know it's quarter final or semi final. You are in that you stand and you don't know, right? So, the sales call will follow one thing keep the price discussion the last. You continue to talk about quality, safety. For you to say that there was a big time, you talk like that. Uh, or your factory, I mean, though some way that like you have to sell fear, that actually factual because if anything goes wrong with the DC cable, it could be a 20 percent product or a 30 percent product in the system, but still very important, right? So please sell, I mean, immediately we sell that, don't fall in the trap that Ronald has scored in 42 or actually scored 41. So don't get into that price, but that's number one. Number two is that whom you are talking to, you have to reason the final, quarter final, semi final, you don't know. And in SAP specifically, the promoter will say, Mera man, you so rakho, hey, to do. Correct? So you just say, sir, Mera bus chalo, free ba de do. Let's talk to the finance side. You let zero down the safety, quality and everything. So that's, I think, the, that's the way you manage. And proud to say that you talk to very close to 100 crore where we are now. And you are on the startup led by, I mean, I would say good team. We are profitable for the last four years. We are not in that competition of killing each other and just winning time. For that, I mean, it's, nobody is the winner. And let's not do that in the industry because I, you have a brand more solar industry and, and nobody is a winner. And it's a solar itself is a uh, loser, right? And sustainable business has to be sustainable, otherwise you should not buy a jacket and everything before, right? So that's, that's very, very important. Last thing I want to talk about before you go to the I would like to add over here. I'm totally agree with you. There is one more I didn't do it, which is basically most of the customers are lifting. There is one guideline of MNRE and they are lifting that number. Which shows some, some, you know, 35, 38 benchmark, you know, price by MNR. And people, you know, although they are aware that this is just a stand, I mean, the cost of a solar standalone project, where there are so many variable parameters, including all the permission of the pool, it goes to almost 10 to 12 rupees more than that cost. Okay, and people don't, don't realize it. So many a times we have to give the example that, if suppose, let's say, take example of two wheeler or four wheeler. The actually price of the tubular and formula showing on the quotation and by the time it comes on road, the road, there is a concept, you know, you know that. Okay, the price of the road and price and actually uh, in the warehouse. So that concept need to be educated to the people and they will never realize that yes. And as I said, I mean communication I would say gap yeah, rather. That quality matters and sustainability is Dasbar Kadoke or Mahiga Chidiki Bar Kadoke and about the Ruya. Because it's an asset which gives 20 30 percent output every year. If an asset investor could be out 10 15 percent, it gives an animal to be there for 25 years, right? So that's very, very important because your maintenance cost will be higher, your fire safety compliance will be higher, your output will be lower, all these things are important. So, as I was saying, we'll be very happy to educate together the, the ecosystem as a platform so that we focus more on quality and durability because it's a product to be there for 25 years. Yeah. I would like to add from MSC's side. While you do the business, you are thinking only short term to get the order. Later, then it is with us. Because the uh, developer or the uh, vendor leaves after the completion of the project, the customer comes to us. He said that it will be free. So, I am just interested. You have to do your business. It is your bread and butter. But, don't hide anything. Yeah. Stars are there for everything, and people curse us because of the fault on the other absolutely, side. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we are the government entity, people trust us. 
एक किस्सा झाला मी सांगतोय तीस सेकंद घेतो तुमचे जसं यांनी सांगितलं एक्केचाळीस हजार चारशे रुपये एक किलो वाटचं प्रोजेक्टची कॉस्ट आहे आम्ही वेबसाईट वर पब्लिश केली ती एमएनआर ने दिलेली आहे एज पर दी लॉ वी हॅव गिव्हन ऑथर प्राइस पंचावन्न हजार आहे कस्टमरने व्हेंडरला एम्प्लॉयर एजन्सीला कॉल केला चार एजन्सी चार एक साठ हजारचं कोटेशन दिलं तो आमच्या वेळेला भांडायला लागला तुम्ही वेबसाईट वर एक्केचाळीस चारशे दिलेला आहे तो साठ हजार म्हणून तुम्ही त्याला लागलीच करा आणि पेपर लावा की आमच्या हजार आहे सो this is the uh, this is one of the reason we always name to the policies but internal business issues is also one of the issue for not uh, or less growth of the sector kabhi ata government la naam karun sagya chota hai service sector madhe tumhi kai karu shakta nahi kabhi tumhala business karayla tar tumcha business as i say quality ase ka aaj apan pune madhe durva pura 450 rupaye thali khala pan jato karan ka ta quality hai मग तसं तुम्ही करा ना त्याच्याने करा तर तुमचाही बिझनेस लास्ट होईल आणि आमचंही नाव खराब नाही होणार आणि मार्केटिंग करताना एमएसटीसीएल ला खराब म्हणून मार्केटिंग करू नका तुम्ही त्यांना सोलरची किंवा रिन्युएबलची गरज पडत नाही तुम्हाला माहिती काय एमएसटीसीचं डिस्ट्रीब्युशन पेपर आहे काय करायचं काय करायचं असं करू नका आमचा बिझनेस आम्हाला कोणता तुम्ही तुमचा बिझनेस करा आणि थँक यू व्हेरी व्हेरी नाईस वे ऑफ पुटिंग इट अप and i completely agree with you one more thing i have to say is that you got a renewable energy entrepreneur and you do a bad job today when you are done for your one crore it's going to hit you back badly for you to handle your damage because your damage that time because somebody says that x did a bad job your damage will be very very high unless you are not able to once you use the valuation and leave and that option is not left in the renewable energy anymore right so you got to be sustainable in your business be focused on quality because it's going to hit you back it's going to hurt you back otherwise
we have shifted to A4. Now I understand it's a regressive move, but that regressive move is going to have an impact on your business. So continuously being in touch with the customer, asking the right set of questions, and being intelligent is a very, very essential point. Uh, another very important thing that we have seen now in the asset management for a couple of hundred, like what's more, uh, we definitely do realize that what is who is the asset management being done by, and what are the owners behind the goals? We are working with developers, we are working with end customers. Uh, unfortunately, I am not taking away anything from anyone here, but uh, there is almost like a musical chair with the developer that is going on. And the end customer is just livid. And that lividness is very hard to deal with for asset management because uh, the, predic the predicament that it puts us is, uh, as uh, we just mentioned, we have an encumbrance of going to sign. No longer is the same owner there. And that musical chair is just a very, very difficult thing to work with for asset management. So, I believe uh, these are some key takeaways that we have learned from last year about doing asset management. Thanks, thanks, Adam. Uh, before we conclude, we will go to the audience. If you have any queries, we will uh, respond to those queries as far as we can. And uh, over to you. Anyone have any queries? Okay. Either. Yeah, everybody understood everything, or maybe nothing else. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks to the audience with the experienced and uh, dynamic entrepreneurs in solar ecosystem. I mean, as you said, not doing solar is a crime. You buy a mobile phone, smartphone, it costs almost one kilowatt, right? And you drive it off in four years. So, it appreciates you within 25% every year, the extra depreciation, right? Other than the carry cost, whatever the address cost, you always uh, supposed to take. But solar is an asset, one kilowatt with one mobile phone. Probably in smartphone, every household will look at. More also will have smartphone rather than one kilowatt of solar, unfortunately, right? This shows that we don't respect wind, or maybe there is something wrong with the ecosystem, we are not going to communicate or finance or we will enable solar. So collectively we try to do that, that's number one. In any ecosystem like the solar system, uh, there is a EPC, there will be an investor which will be customer or a separate investor, a customer uh, that wants to then discount, without them we can't do anything because they have been, they have been maintaining they the owners of maintaining the system over 100 years and their manufacturers. So our primary job is to say that let's not kill each other, let's educate people on quality and try to enable as much as adoption as possible. And solar will, can fuel the uh, economy which is, is growing, sustainable energy is the way forward. We have to decarbonize, we are still living at the cost of our next generation, that cannot happen. So thank you very much once again for your present hearing and if you have any questions, we can be more open. Thank you.